Writing the discussion section can be one of the most challenging part of a research paper, and usually it takes the longest. Why is that? It's because it's complex. Nobody know what discuss actually means. I recently gave a master class on how to write different sections well and make it a compelling story. I took out a snippet specifically on the discussion side to talk about what discussion means, how do you get started, and what makes a weak versus what makes a strong discussion. Stick around. This is a very good video. It's going to change how you think about your discussion section. I'll see you there. What's the discussion section? The discussion section is to interpret your findings in the context of a research field. So think about the application and implication of your research. Importantly, readers don't re necessarily see what you see in your results. You ha actually have to tell them. So this is a structure you will see in the discussion section. First is paragraph one. Usually it is a summary of all the results and the main answer to your research question, the key results. Then you have a bunch of middle paragraphs. Here you are discussing findings in sequence or in importance. And then in the final paragraphs, you talk about limitations, strengths, application, and also future directions. What does it mean to discuss a paper? When I first tried writing paper, I find discussion the most difficult. It is still the most difficult. The main issue is I don't really know how to discuss. What does it mean? So let me give you a few clues. First, is this an unexpected finding? If it is, why do you think that is? Very important, don't sweep it under the rug because the reviewers will ask you to explain it. I can share a story. There was one study results that were really interesting for us and unexpected. The strategy we took was, mm, you know what, it's a small thing. I don't think people will notice. Let's not talk about it. If we don't talk about it, maybe people won't notice it. Of course, when we got the review back, everybody noticed it. All three reviewers and also the editor said, can you please explain why this is happening? And so we have to go back. So my main point is, if you have an unexpected finding that is troubling, don't sweep it in the rug. Just really think about it and address it. The next one is concordant findings with other studies. That means similar. Ask yourself, why is it similar? Why is my study finding similar to other papers in the literature? But don't just end there. Think about how does your study finding add more to it? Then the third one is this finding with other studies. Or maybe it's mixed. What you want to include in your discussion is talk about why is it different? Is it in different population? Is it the sample size too small, new theories? Or maybe mine is better because I'm just not talking about that. And then finally, in the last few paragraphs, typically you can also talk about implication, the impact of your study finding, application, how can you use this study results in different settings and address potential objections and also talk about future research. So this is a discussion matrix that I create before I start writing the whole paper up. The reason I like to do this is because I like to plan, write the bullet points first and the outline, share it with the co-author before you spend time writing those beautifully crafted paragraphs. And from personal experience, whenever I don't do that, I get bitten at the end because, um, the, the co-author is like, oh, I, I don't agree with this discussion. Um, I don't agree with this part. Let's reframe everything. So it is better to plan ahead, think about my findings. What are the studies with similar findings in the second column? Maybe studies with discordant findings. And also generally think about the application and implication and write about your thoughts. And now you can create an outline. Once everybody's happy with that, then you can start crafting the paper. It's really much more efficient that way. Now I want to talk about weak versus strong discussion. So my first few papers, I have been using a lot of weak discussion. And after reading more papers, I realized there are differences in um, higher impact papers in higher impact journals. Their discussion sections are much, much stronger. And the difference is the weak one only states what studies are similar or different from our study finding. And the strong ones not only say what, but they state why and how other studies are similar or different from our study finding. So that's a key difference. 
Let me show you a personal example from one of the drafts before we make major changes with the paper. So here, you can pause and take your time to read through the paragraph, but really what I want to highlight is, first we summarize study one, basically reporting the rates of graph loss. Then in the second part, I summarize study two, and we were reporting the rates of graph loss. And then the final sentence, we talk about our own finding and about rejection rates. So if you can see here, we are only talking about the what, and we just basically summarize and didn't really have much thought to it. Then this is the after version. And how is it different? First, we talk about our own finding. This is a hero. Then we talk about why there are different rates of graph rejection. And here, then we support, okay, sh studies showing that one type of therapy increases graph rejection. And then one group of therapy is used to treat rejection. And then another group of therapy is shown to reduce rejection in animal studies. And so here we are talking about both studies that are contradicting and also supporting, but we explain why the differences. So that, that made it much stronger. So let me show you another example here. This is a paper published in New England Journal of Medicine. Here, the first sentence, they immediately say, one way that our study differed from that of Gil and colleagues was the size of the dose. They are saying how they are different from other studies. And then in the middle paragraphs here, they explain why they deliberately chose their method. Then finally, they added a, a little bit of balanced opinion, but the smaller dose could also be okay. So here, again, importantly, it's not just about reporting studies that are different from them, but explaining how they're different and why they chose this particular method. Now, the final part, I want to talk about limitations. Limitation can be a struggle for some people because they maybe come up with one or two and then they stop there. So let me give you some few examples. Get started with those that are inherent to study design. For example, if you see, see cross-sectional studies, you can say no temporal relationship. If you see a cohort study, you can say it's a cohort study, therefore, we can only assess association and not causation. If you're writing a qualitative study, you can say, oh, because this is a qualitative study, we cannot make statistical inferences, only hypothesis generating. If it's a randomized controlled trial, you can say that results may not translate into real life setting because this is done in a highly controlled environment. Other limitations include limitations that are related to study instruments or method of data collection or access of data and also sample and selection of sample to a small or limited to a certain population. Number four, it could also be limitations of the researchers, unable to carry out the research as planned. For example, dropout rate, unable to recruit participants, running out of time or money, outside circumstances, and number five, generalizability. Very important slide. Do not merely state the limitations. Also explain, how you're contributing to science despite the limitation, or how the limitation is not as bad as people might think, or maybe how you have tried to fix the limitation or reduce bias, and how future study is needed to solve this limitation. And make sure you, you're specific about this. So I'm gonna give you some examples here. So here, ethnicity was missing for approximately 26% of patients. So they are saying that as a limitation. And then the last sentence, but was broadly representative. So basically you give the limitation, but it's not as bad as you think. The next sentence here, there were also missing data on obesity and smoking. And then the next, immediately they say, sensitivity analyses found that our estimates were robust to our assumptions around missing data. So they basically tried to say that, fix this limitation, they checked the limitation and it was actually fine. All right, so I've shared some strategies and tips on how to write a discussion section. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.